Well, hello everybody. Uh, this is Leo again. This is still probably one of the first videos you're seeing of me. So I know most of you or some of you haven't met me yet. Um, maybe we never will in, in person. Um, so I wanted to uh, give a quick introduction for chapter 11. That's, that's where we're going to start this quarter. Um, I actually already posted a video at the beginning of the first section, but I realized I should probably give you a little big picture of where we're going here. So chapter 11, we're talking about sequences and series. Um, so in, in simplest terms, a sequence is just a list of numbers in a particular order, and a series uh, is when you add those, those lists up. And in particular, we're mostly going to be dealing with infinite series uh, and sequences, meaning these lists go on forever, um, and we add up these lists of things that go on forever. Um, so, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time in the beginning um, uh, just kind of getting comfortable with these ideas. You've seen a little bit of this before in integral calculus, uh, the Riemann sums, the way we come up with the idea of area under a curve um, requires us to add up an infinite series of terms, or uh, you know we use the limit to 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 define what a sum of infinite terms is, right? So we're gonna use the same sort of thing here. But what we're really building for, and the, the number one thing, um, well, hold on. We're, along the way, we're going we're gonna to get a little bit of idea of how do we tell when these things add up and when they don't. Um, and, and what we're building for um, is it turns out that we can use an infinite series. Um, again, that's when we add up an infinite list of things, but instead of adding up an infinite list of numbers, we're adding up an infinite list of functions. Um, in particular, it's an infinite polynomial. So each function we're adding up will be a constant function, a linear function, a quadratic function, a cubic function, a degree four, a degree five. So we're adding up higher and higher degree polynomials or what we'll learn to call power functions. And when you do that, when you add up these infinite series for certain functions, it turns out this is an alternate way to represent them. Um, this is not the only thing that series are used for, but this is what we are really pushing for right now. This is why we're doing it, something called uh, a Taylor series. They're a really, really important part of, of mathematics and science. Um, and so we're gonna start poking into those a bit. And it takes a little while to get there, but I wanted to give you a little taste of the end um, uh, right now so you can see what we're heading for, because it's, it's quite cool where we're going with this stuff. Um, so let me share an image with you. So we should be now looking at um, a graph of 1 over x, right, this red line here. Um, and, and so I want to, this is kind of a good moment to review some of Calc 1, uh, uh, differential calculus. One of the things we do in Calc 1 with these derivatives, remember, they tell us the slope of the tangent line. And especially if, I, I know if you were in my class, I, I reiterated over and over again, one of the things we like to do is use the tangent line to approximate uh, our actual functions because linear things are easy and other things can be more difficult, right? So let's, let's think about that approximating for a second. Here's one over X. I'm, I'm in particular looking at the point, uh, I'm gonna look at this point here where X equals two and so one over X is one half. If I want to approximate that function there, the simplest thing I could do is just take the function y equals two. It's a function whose only similarity with the function we're talking about is that it has the same value at x equals two, okay? That's its only similarity with it, really. That's, that's all I cared about. It's like, well, let me at least make sure it matches at that one point, okay? It's not a very good approximation, okay? So maybe I decide, I'm gonna do what we did in Calc 1. Instead of just making sure the value <clears throat> is the same, let's keep the value the same, but also make sure it has the same slope as the graph at that point. So we end up with a linear function that still passes through this point, but whose, tangent, whose, uh, whose slope is the derivative of our function there, right? It's the tangent line slope. And so we get this, we get this line that still only hits our graph at this one point, but it's a better approximation, right? It, it stays closer to the, to the function for longer. So we're gonna take this another step. We've made sure that it has the same value. We've made sure that it has the same slope or first derivative, but notice we've got a linear, we've got a line 
And our graph that we're trying to approximate is curved. So let's try to give it the same kind of curve by matching the concavity, right? Remember the concavity of a graph comes from, or we, we understand the concavity of a graph by looking at its second derivative. So what I'm going to do is make sure this approximating function has the same second derivative at this point, okay? So again, I've got a function now that hits the graph I'm trying to approximate. I'm trying to, let, 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 me, let me say it very precisely. I'm trying to approximate this function and I'm gonna approximate it near x equals two. So I make sure it has the same value. Then I made sure it has the same first derivative. And now I've made sure it has the same second derivative. So now I've got a parabola, right? To get a second derivative, a linear function, once you take the second derivative, it's just zero. Its first derivative is a constant, its second derivative is zero. So I had to come up with a quadratic function so that it would have a second derivative and it matches the concavity. And so now I get a function that looks very similar to this, this graph near this point, right? And we keep playing this game. We keep adding, I go from a quadratic, uh, 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 quadratic function to a cubic function, and I'm going to make sure now that the value of my value of my function, the first derivative, second derivative, and now third derivative are all matched by this polynomial that I'm coming up with. And now I get another approximating function that does a little bit better. And we keep playing this game. We keep adding terms to our polynomial. So I went from a constant to a linear to a quadratic to a cubic. I have a degree four now, a degree five, a degree six. And as I add more and more terms, you might notice that this approximating function is getting closer and closer and closer. It looks more and more, well, right now the computer's lagging to do some processing, but now you see that it jumped uh, to become a bit closer. I've got it going up to 50 terms. This might take it quite a while to process. Uh, there we go. And we see that if you look along this left edge here, oh, I guess it wasn't done processing. We see it just jumped again. And you can see how similar it has become here. And it's very, very close up to almost four. So in some cases, we can't actually do a perfect job of this. We can only approximate, approximate the function we're after in a limited window. Um, we'll call that the interval of convergence eventually. But you can just think about this, is this little window that our functions look the same. If you notice on the left-hand side of this graph, uh, the negative side of our graph, we're not matching it at all. So right now I've got something that approximates very well between zero and four. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at sine of x. Okay. And sine of x, we're going to do almost, we're going to do essentially the same thing. I started this one at zero. I'm trying to approximate it at x equals zero. And in the same way, let me center this a little more, right? Let's, let's go look at, there's our tangent. Well, here, here's our zero approxim, here's our, our value approximation. This is a, the straight line at y equals zero that only matches sine in the sense that it has the same value at zero. If I make a linear approximating function, the tangent, uh, the tangent line uh, or our linear approximation from differential calculus, we see that it lays right uh, nicely along sine there, but then, actually, then after sine turns, uh, the approximation gets worse. So we might jump to another approximating polynomial. In this case, I'm gonna jump up to a degree, uh, degree three. And you can see I'm adding higher and higher degrees of this polynomial. I'll zoom way out. This takes a bit for the computer to process. Let's give it one second here. But as I add more and more terms, making my polynomial a higher and higher and higher degree, I'm adding more and more, uh, I'm getting closer and closer to sine. And while we obviously can't do this, I can't write out an infinite number of terms in, in, in the, we, it, according to the mathematics we're going to learn, these are equivalent. If I take this, in, there's an infinite series, an infinite polynomial that is exactly equivalent to sine of x, okay? Um, and you can see in this one, we've gone up to, I've got 40 terms here, which is not really that many. Um, 
we're very, very close to sign, especially near zero where we started, right? It's not precisely the same. I don't think we'll be able to see it with this graph. Um, there will be some little amount of difference there, but it's, it's, it's incredibly close approximation. So that's, that's where we're headed with this. We're gonna spend some time understanding just how series uh, work. But in the end, what I really want you to be able to come away from chapter 11 with is you're gonna learn how to write these series down. And it turns out to be a pretty straightforward process, but we'll, we'll build up to that. Um, all right, that is it for now. Um, I will talk to you guys sooner or later.